Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a combo deck that's capable of consistently winning the game on turn 3. And all we need to do is cast a Geological Appraiser, thanks to the early treasures from a Creative Outburst or Magma Opus, and then the rest of the combo will kind of work itself out. There's a 3-2 that when it enters battlefield, if we cast it, we get to discover 3. And if you take a look at our deck breakdown, every single card in the deck costs more than 3, except for Eldritch Evolution and Glass pull mimic because even some of our cheaper plays like consigned to oblivion bedag bedazzle and reason to believe still count as the combined mana value of both halves so reason to believe is a six drop consigned to oblivion a seven drop bedag bedazzle costs eight mana total when looking at the card so we can't discover into them and instead will be guaranteed to either find glass pull mimic can be played as a tap land or as a creature that copies another creature in play and since we're casting it with the discover mechanic it will still trigger the appraiser's ability so we can essentially find additional copies of appraiser until we find a copy of eldritch evolution which is the only author card we can find and then eldritch evolution lets us sacrifice a creature to search up a creature with a mana value equal to that creature plus two if we want to so we can sack our appraiser now get a trumpeting a carnosaur instead so a nice upgrade from a three two to a seven six trampler and then it gets to discover five so still won't be able to hit any of the cards on the left but can still find additional copies of appraiser copies of glass pool mimic which will now copy the carnosaur instead of the appraiser and then eventually we will find another eldritch evolution after making a few copies of carnosaur and then get our doom scar titan 4-4 saying when it enters creatures we control get plus one plus so and gain haste until end of turn and then just turn all our carnosaurs and appraisers sideways to close out the game and that's often going to be more than 20 damage as early as turn three again thanks to magma opus discarding it on turn two to make a treasure or creative outburst can do the same and then we can also eventually hard cast them in the grindier matchups where the opponent might be keeping up insta speed interaction such as counter spells or removal to stop our combo from going off so we still kind of have a backup plan if it doesn't immediately work out and then taking a look at some of our split cards we've got eight cards with aftermath reason to believe gets to scry three for one mana so that can dig towards our appraiser maybe find a second copy in case the first one gets discarded or countered and then eventually we could also cast believe thanks to our treasures or thanks to mana confluence so we can also maybe draw an extra card now do keep in mind if we cast believe and we find an appraiser on top of the deck it will not trigger the discover mechanic since we did not cast it and simply put it on the battlefield then we also have consigned to oblivion which gives us a two mana instant speed bounce spell so this can interact with the mirror match where we can bounce an opposing appraiser and then maybe combo on the following turn this can also maybe bounce some of the heroic creatures from the boros aggro deck or a grease fang before it manages to put a parhelion in play and then at the oblivion half can also be useful in the grindier matchups making the opponent discard two cards and then a bedeck bedazzle we can cast if we have double red in play which is usually not too difficult since we have a lot of blue red dual lands and then this can also maybe take out an early creature including an opposing grease fang or an opposing copy of a geological appraiser and then later we could also cast bedazzle to destroy a land which could also be pretty fun and then we've got pretty much everything covered the mana base has lots of blue red dual lands since we want to be able to cast turn one reason as well as maybe a turn two bedeck and then still be able to cast our other spells on curve and then we don't really have any green sources to hard cast eldritch evolution since it's not really our main plan and we usually want to put it back into our deck if we mulligan so we have more copies that we can find since there is a tiny chance that the combo can fizzle if we immediately find all four copies of eldritch evolution without being able to keep any creatures on the battlefield so drawing copies of eldritch evolution is also not advised and then of course the mimic can also be an extra land which means that we'll have a pretty high land count overall so hitting our land drops is usually not a problem now I've considered playing a blue-black dual land instead of an island since that would allow us to play turn one reason and cast turn two bedeck which has the black-red hybrid mana cost but ended up going with an island since it's nice to have some untapped lands later if we need to hard cast some of our expensive spells including maybe the carnosaur can also use the three mana ability to deal three damage which gives us more early interaction so overall the deck does have some early interactive spells so it's not just a one-trick pony that can only win the game with a and hopes to be faster than the opponent we can also slow the opponent down and then eventually set up the appraiser once we feel like the coast is clear 
and then uh, yeah we've got mana confluence which can help out with the aftermath halves of some of our split cards as well as potentially hard casting eldritch evolution if that's required and then we're also running karuga as our companion just because we can and again in those grindier matchups it can also be an extra 5-4 body which can come in handy if you don't want to play karuga to give away a less information about what deck you might be on that's also totally reasonable especially once the deck becomes a bit more popular so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and we're missing our appraiser even with double reason i don't think we can keep especially with only two lands i'm gonna be kind of forced to use my treasure makers as my lands which can get pretty messy so let's just take a mulligan and this is much better easy keep bottom the evolution hope there's no discard spell and then mimic can be our first land drop does give the opponent a bit more information as opposed to playing another land opponent on a red white aggro potentially a heroic strategy now we can also interact with consign so if our opponent does keep up mana for a removal spell maybe go for consign if they tap out make a treasure turn three combo but i'll take the one for now And a Virtuoso means we get to combo kill. Alright, that was easy enough. Just hoping we don't hit all four Eldritch Evolutions to start out, but we know one of them is at the bottom. So that's nice insurance. Because if we hit another Eldritch Evolution of this Carnosaur, then we're not really making any progress. But we found our Mimic, so everything is good to go. Hasn't happened yet where I was unable to combo kill. But it is technically possible. And now we're just waiting for evolution to get our Doomscar Titan. And there we go. With a bit of damage to spare. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This is a mulligan. This is a keep. Evolution to the bottom and hope to find some two mana interaction or a treasure maker so we can combo early. There's definitely decks that can kill us before we manage to cast our appraiser, but now with consign we've got a bit more interaction. This might be the Mono Green Devotion deck, yeah, we'll follow Haven. Could already bounce it with Consign. And that's probably reasonable here. Prevent them from casting a 4-drop. And the Green Devotion deck doesn't really have any instant speed interaction or way to stop the combo as far as I know. Now I can go for a Treasure Token. Probably better than going for Kiruga. All growth troll, that's fine. And cast our appraiser. We'll see if our opponent sticks around to watch the fireworks. Found our evolution, and get our Carnosaur. The fact that our opponents are reading all our cards makes me think that they probably haven't faced the combo before. Monogreen Devotion, also not the best choice when you expect a lot of this blue-red discover shenanigans. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, we've got our Appraiser. No treasure maker, so it's going to be turn four, but we have a bit of interaction. Evolution in hand, also not ideal, but hopefully it's not going to matter. Black, green, supplier, so a graveyard deck might be Grease Fang. Yeah, and we see chariots. 
So having instant speed bounds is pretty useful. And uh, does it matter which land we play? I don't think so. Take the one. Next turn, probably tapped steam vents. And then I don't expect too much instant speed removal from the Grease Fang deck. Grizzly Salvage. Hope they just tap out for their Grease Fang here. And let me make sure to put some stops so we can bounce it before it gets a chance to trigger. Okay. So bounce your Grease Fang. And hopefully kill you on the way back. And get some Mimics. Now Evolution and get Carnosaur. And then now we can get our Doomscar Titan if we hit another evolution. We're making Grease Fang look like a fair magic card, so that's unprecedented. Another Carnosaur. There's the evolution. And there's the Titan. Our opponent was maybe hoping we had all the titans left in hand, or they just haven't faced this combo before. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a very nice hand. Turn two Opus, turn three Appraiser, hopefully. Although we might see some hand disruption interact with our game plan. Can cast turn one Reason, or go for tapped lands. Casting Reason is fine if we want to find another Appraiser in case they can take this one away, or if they can remove it at instant speed. Does potentially mean taking more damage, and I do want to play the Red Source so we can Bedak onto, if that's what is more important. And yeah, I don't really need any of these. Blood Tithe Harvesters, so it's more of a vampire deck. Can play this on the red and then pass with the deck or make a treasure and hope our opponent taps out. If they keep up a bunch of mana, then we might have to kind of pivot game plan maybe. Thought sees. All right, that's unfortunate. So that's gonna happen. I suppose casting Bedek in response was also reasonable in case they have a second discard spell. They could first take Bedek and then take Appraiser. So Appraiser's gone. And Knight triggers, so probably fine to take out the Knight now. Even though we could top deck Appraiser and then making a treasure would still let us combo. I think Knight's going to be a bigger problem as opposed to Harvester when it comes to dealing damage here. Okay, so could go for Kiruga in hand, but I think I prefer Tapland make a treasure. Put on Madnessing a Markov Baron. Okay, so presumably they'll be tapped out. But uh, yeah, we don't have a very big window of opportunity to draw another appraiser. Definitely showing the weakness against Thoughtseize. So we're at 9. So putting Kirugan hand doesn't really help us much. I could Soaring City bounce Harvester, which maybe buys us an extra turn, or I can Aftermath Believe just to draw a card. 
which maybe gets us a card closer to another appraiser. Close call. Sorting City bounce Harvester, opponent still hits us for two, replays Harvester. Then we would be at seven, facing at least six damage, but they could easily deploy another threat. Maybe that's still better than just drawing a card here, basically. Cavern on Vampire. And Soren can maybe cheat something into play. Can also sack a Vampire here after dealing six to try and close out the game right now. So let's bounce Harvester. So we only get one more turn here to top deck appraiser, but our opponent is tapped out. And that's not an appraiser. Alright, GG's, looks like we're dead. Can have a look with Belief to see how close we were. And yeah, there's an appraiser, although sadly it's not gonna trigger since we didn't cast it here. So, don't get to combo, but we were just one turn away. Soren takes out Appraiser and takes seven. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. We've got a double appraiser facing Kiruga, so it could be some sort of mirror match. At least we've got consign for a bit of interaction. Since we don't have a treasure maker, I could go turn one reason, turn two keep up consign, then play mimic, and then appraiser. Or we could still play tap mimic in case we find a treasure maker, in which case we could combo turn three. I think it's still more realistic to cast Reason. And then I do want one more land. Could make it Mana Confluence in case we want access to some of our Aftermath cards. And we'll see what our opponent's up to. Alright, they're not doing a whole lot here. Don't expect to need Consign on turn 2. So I suppose we can play Tap to Mimic. And then, since our opponent did not make their own treasure here, could be fine to put Keruga in hand and tap out, could keep up consign, and then still make treasure end of turn. But yeah, now it's going to be an interesting waiting game to see who goes for the combo first, and whether or not the opponent has interaction. So if I go for Appraiser, I wouldn't be able to consign on the way back, so maybe it's best for me to wait and then try and go for it next turn, especially if we pick up another land, allowing me to keep up consign during the opponent's turn. And what kind of interaction could they have? Of course, similar spells. They could also Leyline Binding here for three mana, so let's just pass. Opponent did nothing. There we also see Glasspool Mimic. So there's not much for me to bounce. Did not find a land. So yeah, going for the combo is a little risky. So I'll pass. Bones got her own treasure. Now we've got something we can potentially bounce with Consign. Our opponent's just going to hard cast Carnosaur. Okay, so in response to the Discover trigger, we could bounce Carnosaur in case they find a clone, they can't clone the Carnosaur. And then we have another Consign in case they hit an Appraiser here. Eldritch Revolution now without a target. And now our opponent's tapped out, so we can untap and combo ourselves. Alright, so our patience paid off. Opponent could have also used their Carnosaur to destroy our Appraiser to fizzle our combo. Awesome, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw with a very nice hand. Turn two Magma Opus, hopefully setting up turn three Appraiser. Facing what could be a heroic deck. Now Inspector points towards red-white tokens. Convoke instead. Could reason. Although I don't really see a reason to cast it since our best line is Magma Opus into Appraiser. And I don't expect any real interaction from the opponent's deck that could maybe take away the Appraiser or counter it. So we don't need a backup. So this way we can save ourselves two damage. So just play a land and pass. And then next turn it's combo time. Small chance your opponent has some instant speed removal that could take out the appraiser. But uh, not usually played in the tokens deck. And they're likely to tap out anyways. Now they will be able to establish quite the board presence, so if they have a lot of toughness back, we might need multiple Carnosaurs on the battlefields to attack to actually close out the game. But most of their creatures will be tapped. Okay, so a nice start from the tokens deck here, turn 3 Knight Errant, with the mana left to still cast a 1-drop. But that's fine with me. Finds two more copies. And the Voldaren Epicure is next. Alright, so let's make our treasure. Cast a Praiser. And hopefully everything will fall into place. The worst case scenario is immediately finding multiple copies of Eldritch Evolution and then not having enough creatures in play to actually attack for lethal, but yeah, opponent seems familiar with the combo and explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we're missing our appraiser, so we'll take a mulligan. This is much better. So we've got the combo on turn three potentially with available interaction if that's more important. So Carnosaur can go to the bottom. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain and Kumano, so a red aggro. Okay. If our opponent keeps up mana, we might go for removal instead of magma opus. If our opponent taps out, then we can just go for the treasure token and uh, combo next turn. Opponent's gonna attack with a Swiss spear. And looks like there's a follow up play with fire. Alright, so. Could totally bedeck the Swiss Spear and kill it, but no need when we can combo next turn. One Eldritch Evolution in hand, so chances of fizzling, not super high, but not impossible. At the very least, we'll put some creatures in play. Evolution, Sack, Appraiser, still counts as a 4-drop, so we can get our Carnosaur. And hopefully copy that a few times before putting our Giant into play. And there we have it, our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems quite good. Turn 1, probably just play Tapped Mimic, and then turn 2, Magma Opus, turn 3, Appraiser. If our opponent has interaction, we've got reason to maybe dig for another combo piece. Now, still gonna stick to the plan here. Turn 1, Gilded Goose off Temple Garden, so not entirely sure what our opponent's up to. Uh, Lenor Elves. And a Wild Growth Walker. Alright, so opponents the Explore combo deck with Amalia, I believe, which can uh, combo with Wild Growth Walker and Explore. So, don't expect any interaction, and we're good to go here. On turn 3. Evolution, get Cornsaur. 
and hope not to find more copies of Evolution right away. Appraiser's fine. Get another Carnosaur. Hope to get a Mimic to copy Carnosaur. Another Appraiser works. And then now Mimic copy Carnosaur. And at some point we'll find Evolution to give the team haste. Aren't we all having fun? There we go. Appraiser, get a 6 drop. And Doomscar Titan will be our selection. Awesome. That's quite a bit of damage on turn 3. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and I don't think we can keep without Appraiser, no Treasure Maker either. Otherwise you could argue a reason to find Appraiser, can still maybe combo on turn 3. Alright, this is much better. Titan on the bottom, turn 2 Treasure, turn 3 combo, turn 4 try again if there's interaction here. So, can I play this on red? Opponent playing with Gigantha could be the heroic deck which has picked up in popularity after Monstrous Rage got added to the format with turn 1 Soulscar Mage. So there's still a chance they could keep up a Reckless Rage to take out our Appraiser, but don't really expect them to keep it up this early. So we'll take one. And there's Pia, so it's maybe a slightly different deck after all. But yeah, we don't mind. Cast Appraiser. This is now a turn 3 format, apparently. At some point we'll find Eldritch Evolution. And get our Carnosaur. And we're just not going to fizzle anymore. We'll find another Eldritch Evolution. And we can already get our Doomscar Titan. <laughs> Oops, indeed. Sweet. There we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing Appraiser. We've got reason to maybe dig for it, but Titan in hand's also not ideal, so definitely take a mulligan. A very similar hand here. Also, we're up against Yorion, so it could be a control deck with a few counter spells, which is going to make things tough. So take a mulligan, and this is a keep. Evolution and Carnosaur can go. And then it's going to be tapped Mimic, turn 2 Magma Opus, hopefully turn 3 Appraiser and combo. The fact that we're playing Mimic also gives the opponent a bit of extra information here about what we might be up to. Just gotta hope they don't expect a turn 3 combo kill. Opponent with an Omen. So they likely have Leyline Binding in their deck, which could mess with the combo here. Gotta hope they tap out. I'm still probably going to have to go for it, since things aren't going to get any better. But both counter spells and removal spells could mess things up. Do we get to discover? If our opponent has a Leyline Binding, they can prevent us from copying anything with a Glass Pool Mimic. And yeah, there it is. Alright, that's too bad. Now 
Now, we have a Soaring City to Bounce Binding, but we won't be able to re-trigger the Appraiser since it only happens when we cast it, and not when it just enters a battlefield. So, yeah, we're in a bit of trouble. Do I still play Soaring City? Or do we hang on to it in case we can bounce a binding later? But that's going to require me to cast Appraiser and Channel, so that's unlikely to be the case. So sure, I'll play it. Save myself one damage. Can play Kiruga without drawing anything, but don't think we would likely draw much with Kiruga to begin with. And then we're maybe on the Bedazzle plan to destroy the opponent's lanes. That could have maybe helped us in setting up the combo, Bedazzle the opponent's lands when they're keeping a binding, untap and then combo. So it's possible I could have been more patient. Opponent on the Enigmatic Incarnation build, it seems. Impersonator copying Karuga is good value for them. Draw two. So there's still a tiny bit of hope here. I guess we also have Magma Opus as a decent late game card. But uh, yeah, that binding was quite effective. Up the Beanstalk's a good one. And then I'm probably going to have to bedeck the Reflection of Kiki Jiki as well. And take the trade for Kiruga. Another Beanstalk. Well, our opponent's down to one white mana, but they can still cast a one mana binding is a problem. Play tapped Mimic, and then the plan is going to be end of turn Bedazzle. Hopefully, they're only untapped mana source. Although now with the Shaman, they could also make treasure. So it's possible taking out the Shaman was better than taking out the Reflection of Kiki Jiki. If our plan is to catch the opponent off guard. Another Beanstalk. Another Fable. So now we can Magma Opus, and that can tamp some stuff down, including the opponent's lanes. This card's double fires, yeah, not very good when you need to keep up insta speed removal for the opponent's combo. Could try and set up an ambush here. Our opponent's got so much mana, it's gonna be very difficult to tap them out. Scarab God, that's fine. Draw a bunch with Beanstalk. And go for Magma Opus. But yeah, those treasure tokens are a problem. Found another Magma Opus. 
So taking out Scarab God doesn't really accomplish much, since their opponent's just going to replay it and draw even more Leyline Bindings that they can play for one mana. So I guess we'll pass. Bodyguard to exile our token. So we could Magma Opus now, take out the Bodyguard and the Reflection. Tap some of their lands. And this way we'll get to keep our token. Alright, found another Appraiser, but at this point it's very likely that they found another Leyline Binding. So is there maybe merit to waiting until we can cast two Appraisers in the same turn? That's asking a lot since we only have the two copies left. Uh, creative Outburst, get to look at the top five cards. So it does dig pretty deep. Can take out Scarab God and just start racing here perhaps. I think I prefer that. Opponent is at 16, so it would be a two-turn clock. Maybe we can bait them into taking out an elemental with a Leyline Binding instead. And I guess Scarab God on Bodyguard also represented instant speed removal. And get another Appraiser. Over Consign, which is an option, just bounce the Bodyguard hit for four. Probably just gonna try to combo twice next turn, hope they don't have double Leyline Binding. Their opponent gets to draw three. To be fair, they are playing a Yurion deck, so less likely to draw multiple copies of Leyline Binding. Portable Hole exiles their token. And then we have the mana to cast two Appraisers next turn. Although we're running low on Eldritch Evolutions in the deck now, which could be a concern. Alright, so that works. And get a Carnosaur. Get another appraiser. And now our opponent's gonna lay line binding. Okay. Well, hopefully that's their last one. 43 cards remaining, so still over half of their deck. And this might be our last Eldritch Evolution, or do we have one left? So we have to get pretty lucky with the order in which we hit Eldritch Evolution here. Suppose I can still make a treasure and then cast Evolution from hand. Potent had the third Leyline Binding, yep. Well, that's probably game over now. Well, we definitely put up a fight. Game went a lot longer than I thought it would. But yeah, one mana instant speed removal is pretty rough. And now there's no more hits for the appraiser left in the deck. 
All right, GG's. Scarab God triggers, and an all-out attack will do it. So yeah, good play from our opponents not to run out Fires of Invention so they could keep up instant speed interaction. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Can combo on turn 3 here, if our opponent doesn't have any interaction. Opponent taking a few mulligans. And also on blue-red. So they might be on a very similar combo deck if they took a few aggressive mulligans. So being on the play with turn 3 combo might be what we need, but our opponent could also have some two-mana interaction here for all we know. All right, it's going to be a tap land, so for one mana I don't think our opponent can really disrupt us. So let's go. And our opponent explodes, they know what's going to happen. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is pretty awful. Take a Mulligan. This is perfect. Carnosaur can go, and then got our early interaction. Probably go for Treasure Maker, turn 3 Appraiser. That's the hope. Opponent with turn 1 Mountain, so they might have some instant speed removal to blow up our combo. So I can't really go for it here. I'll still make my treasure. And then maybe cast Reason to dig for another appraiser. And pass. And it looks like Harpoon might be playing the same deck after all. All right, we'll let them potentially combo if they want to, since we have Consign. Yep. So I'm just gonna bounce it right now. And that should take care of things. Eldritch Evolution without a target. And then cast our own Appraiser. Finding Carnosaur. And our opponent explodes, they're not gonna sit through it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got our turn 2 outburst setting up turn 3 Appraiser with a backup in case of a discard spell. So about as good as it gets. Turn 1 Mystic, so a green a ramp strategy. They typically don't have much instant speed removal or counter spells. And I doubt they'll be presenting lethal on turn 3. I guess a Karn could still slow us down since it prevents us from using the treasure for mana. So Karn can still be effective. For now, play Crucible and pass. At least Carnosaur can also go after Planeswalkers. And there's a Cavalier, so that's fine. And there, speak of the devil, and Great Crater goes to the graveyard. So we're point off to a very good start for the Green Devotion deck. But let's see if they can beat a turn 3 Appraiser. Start with an Evolution, get our Carnosaur, and hope not to hit another Evolution right away. Alright, we did, so that's a little awkward. Just get another Carnosaur and hope not to do the same. Alright, well, this is how we can potentially lose. Hitting Evolution right away twice in a row. Alright, now we found our Mimic. Hopefully we get to find a few more Mimics before finding 
the last copies of Eldritch Evolution. So we've already cast three evolutions, so yeah, there's only one left. But now we should have a decent amount of power and toughness to work with. So Appraiser gets Doomscar Titan. Should be just enough here. Although we don't have much damage to spare. Alright, so we got to see our blue red Discover combo deck in action, and I have to say the deck feels pretty busted. Being able to consistently kill on turn 3 is probably not intended for the format, but it also doesn't mean that it's impossible to beat this deck, especially once you know it's incoming. You can use discard spells or counter spells, or you can just keep up some instant speed removal to kill a 3 2, which is not too difficult. But of course, not every deck is designed to keep up removal or a bunch of mana to try and interact, and then if the game does drag on, we still have kind of a reasonable late game of casting Carnosaur and Magma Opus, which can also get the job done. So it's nice that our deck also kind of has a backup plan built in. And then if it comes to best of three, we might need to come up with a bit of a transformational sideboard plan so we don't fully rely on the combo to win the game, but we can also potentially play a fair game against more interactive strategies. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.